So just chill out. You know, drink a seven up, eat a moon pie, quit murdering people. The reason we didn't arrest Eric is because he's dead. We thought it'd be a waste of time just between you and me. If that madman starts into your house of worship with a firearm, you can shoot him. Shoot him a lot so that you can read a newspaper through him. Then there's Shelby Atkinson. He's 49. He's from Hickory Street in Lakeland. He showed up on his birthday and was bragging that it's his birthday. Well, happy birthday, Shelby. How did that work for you? Well, we gave him a birthday gift. We gave him a nice set of handcuffs. And then we gave him a special meal at the jail. And then we gave him free room and board, all for his birthday. And when our undercovers negotiated the price with him, because it was his birthday, we offered him a $10 discount. Now, he certainly had a birthday that he'll remember forever. But there's more to the story. He uh, has a long criminal history. He said he liked handcuffs and blindfolds. Well, the good news for him is he got his handcuffs. Everyone's safe. Please continue your normal life and know that the men and women in law enforcement will put their life at risk to keep you safe, and that's what happened. They killed two innocent women last night in their homes. They tried to kill a lot of law enforcement officers last night and were unsuccessful, and we took them all in custody, okay? Sheriff, one more question, Sheriff, if I could. Um, I think everybody understands the gravity of what happened and the urgency of, and the response that you took. Some of the comments that you made last night about uh, shooting uh, the suspects, possibly, and the some comments today about the uh, ready for a gunfight, was that in the heat of the moment? Do you have any regret about that in light of what No, no, I don't know. I, I not only have no regret, I'm pretty excited about telling you that's exactly what would have happened. And make no mistake about it, there's nothing about politically correct in a gunfight. There's nothing about politically correct when you're keeping people alive and well and safe. And the people of this community and these law enforcement officers come first. I meant every word of it then, and I mean every word of it now. If you surrender peacefully, that's the way we prefer it. You start pointing guns at us, you can not only plan on, but you can guarantee we're going to shoot you. If you go to see a girl at her place, make sure you ask Google what county it's in. Make sure it's not Polk. Sheriff Grady will be waiting for you. I'm going to lift, I'll just lift my cheeks with my fingers. I don't want any vampires messing with me. I don't want any fake registered nurses dealing with me. The message is you don't have to have a firearm. You don't have to have a knife to be a dangerous individual. And if you come to this county and if you use extreme violence to try to carjack somebody from their car, if you get shot, that's on you. You can protect yourself and your property. I think some people, some attorneys would disagree with you, but you're the sheriff, so. I don't care. That's what the attorneys do. Attorney's attorney. But I can tell you right now, you come to this county and you do this string of violent stuff, you're blessed. You're blessed because that man up at that store had the right to protect himself. He had the right to protect him, his property. He had the right to protect that lady. That lady had the right to protect herself and her property. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? And then he goes down to the interstate, causes a crash, tries to break in and steal two more cars while they're occupied. While they're occupied. You don't think there's a problem with that? They don't have a right to protect their property. That's what they did do. You were saying he should have shot him. I didn't say he should have. I said he could have. But he chose not to. Which was the correct choice, correct? 
The choice was that he used the force necessary to protect himself and his property. Had he used that force at the end of that string of violent felonies and encounters and attempted carjackings and stealing from people's cars while they're there in it with it and subsequently tried to break into and did get into one car with a man in it. You can't break into people's cars and take it with them in it. You can't do that. Here's a message. Mind your business. Don't commit crime. Leave people alone. And if you end up in this shape, he needs to count himself very lucky today. You got any other questions? Thank you. President Trump tested positive for COVID-19. Why don't you or any of your staff in this building wear masks? I'm not going to answer that question. No doubt the brains of the operations, the dog. And he looked calm, cool, and collected. I don't think it's his first burglary. You know, there are times in this job and career that you know it has to be true because you can't even make it up. So let me introduce you to Martin Gonzalez Garcia. This guy may be like the dumbest person on the face of the earth. I mean, I'm just guessing. But on the 29th of December, at about 1.10 in the morning, we get a, an alarm at a Dollar General out in Poinciana. And we respond to the, to the alarm and find there's been a burglary and a theft. So we start the investigation and we have some video of the guy who breaks into the store. Well, the manager looks at this video and goes, well, I recognize that guy. I talked to him about a cell phone. He wanted a cell phone. Interestingly enough, there's a cell phone stolen from the burglary. And, and not only that, he asked about employment. I gave him an application. Well, not only that, I got his phone number. Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said? We had his phone number and the deputy who's investigating it go, yeah, I recognize that guy. At 1855 hours at night, we get a 911 hang up. Our deputies respond to a vacant house with a for sale sign in the yard. So we're checking the house, the sliding the glass doors open. So we go in and we check it out and voila. There's Martin, along with his girlfriend, Alicia Ocaso. She's 22. That's right, they're in the house. We go in and we, of course, take them into custody. Martin confesses to both of the burglaries. Ash Ashless, it, she confesses to her burglary that they're in the house. And here's what she said. I, I swear she said this. It's hard for me to even get this out. She dialed 911 to have a deputy come there to help them move their belongings and take them to the airport so that they could fly back to New York. But they don't like it in Florida anymore. Did you hear? Did you hear that? Did you hear that she dialed 911? from inside the house that they'd broken into so we could help them pack up and give them a ride to the airport so they could return to New York. Sheriff, a lot of people have been saying to me today, you know, why does a, um, an arrest warrant have to be served at that hour? Isn't that unsafe? Can you speak to that and why this happens overnight? Certainly the people who ask why an arrest warrant has to be served at that hour are morons. Okay, that warrant's valid 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We received a call for service that that person was at that residence at that time. What do we do? She's running from us. She's always been running from us. She failed to appear. 
what do we do? Say, hey, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. We don't serve warrants at 3 o'clock in the morning. Know this, if you got a warrant outstanding, we're going to arrest you at 2, 3, 4, 5, anytime we can find you. We found this person, and we were going to arrest her. So tell those Monday morning quarterbacks to come down to HR and sign up. See if you can pass the background. See if you can pass the police academy. Let's see if you've got any intestinal fortitude to get out here and do what young men and women like Deputy Lane does. Yeah, you can sit at home and run your mouth on your social media. You don't know what you're talking about. And you certainly don't have the ability to be one of these fine young men and women. Hello everyone, Chef Grady Judd. Coda's here reminding you to be safe when you drive. Don't be distracted. Do you notice Coda is not looking at her cell phone? She's not looking at her driver's license. She's not being reckless. She's just being cool. We're gonna go down here and meet some of the staff. Hi, Coda. Smoke brisket, not meth. Hey, meet the world, Newman. We'll put it on TikTok. What? Put it on TikTok. Yeah. Tick what? <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. We got your gold. We put your tail in the county jail. Think about that, buddy. That's all. Oh. What's next? What's next? What's next? Last What's thing next? you'll see before we put a bullet through your head okay. if you're trying to hurt our children.